So welcome back. So this will be a relatively short video and we're going to actually talk about kind of the first step of how to build a scenario, which is what we're going to do together over the next couple of videos. And then you'll couple that uh, with the two examples of actual scenario building that I did with some of my exec students. And so between the three examples, um, you should get a pretty good feel of scenario building. So what I thought we'd do as a kind of a sample scenario is talk about the pharmaceutical industry here in the United States. Now I'm going to assume um, that you're experts in the pharmaceutical industry just because this is a, an illustration. So for the sake of argument, I'll assume you know all about industry attractiveness of the pharmaceutical industry, you know all the key, you know, all the key and pivot variables and all the relevant variables, you understand the key success factors and the competitive dynamics and all that stuff of the pharmaceutical industry. So we won't go through all that uh, in this video. However, if you're not familiar with these things, I highly recommend you look at my videos on competitive advantage analysis and um, industrial or strategic segmentation to kind of give you a feel for how that's done. But at least in terms of this video, we won't go through that. So, pharmaceutical industry, the last part in terms of specifying the reality under study is of course knowing um, what is your time horizon. And a pharmaceutical, because it takes so long to develop drugs and they typically look at general long-term demographic trends, we might say we're going to look at a 30 to 60 year horizon. Okay? So a long, extremely long-term horizon. So what we're going to do first of all is we're going to draw our graph. Okay. And so we're going to put impact here on the side. And on the bottom, we're going to put uncertainty. And I put un in parentheses here because you can do certainty or uncertainty. You know, that's up to you. Um, you know, if you do certainty versus uncertainty, you just flip the axis. Okay? And then I like to put a minus here and a plus here for my scale. And the reason I do that is what I'm trying to show you is this is low impact, high impact, low uncertainty or high certainty, high uncertainty or low uncertainty. <clears throat> and I don't like to, some people like to put numbers on there like 1 to 10 or 0 to 10. And you know, you're, you're consulting, you have this great presentation, you slap your scenario up there, it's, it's all great. And then there's like some wise guy who resents the fact that you're being paid as a consultant to do the things that they couldn't do themselves. And they ask the question like, well, why didn't you put zero on your scale? Or why is that variable a 2.5 instead of a 2.75? And you know, the whole room snickers. And then you get in like these kind of useless discussions. Avoid that by just putting a minus and a plus. Same thing, some people like to use color, like red and green, and like red at the top, like, you know, that's really high impact, and green at the bottom, that's not really a low impact, or that's more of a low impact because it's green. And then you get the question, well, why is that, you know, burnt orange instead of goldenrod? Just avoid it. It's not useful or helpful. Plus, minus. Make your life easy. Okay. Now, what you're going to have in this cloud up here is your key variables. And just as a reminder, your key variables are high impact, high certainty. And you've got some choice, let me get my eraser here, you've got some choice on how you do it. You can write in your, or excuse me, you can say like V1, V2, V3, V4, just like that, and then have like a legend or something at the bottom of the page. That's one way of doing it. Alternatively, and I have to admit, this is my preference. Alternatively, you can just write what the variables are. And since we're talking about the pharmaceutical industry, I don't know. We can say the age of the population goes up. We can say um, regulations for drugs are going up. And uh, I don't know. Taxes are going up. Population's going up. Something like that. But see, I've actually written them in here. It's my preference to have them written in because that way people aren't like going between looking at the picture and then scrolling and trying to figure out what the graph says. But it's up to you. Okay. Now what you probably notice 
is the fact that on my key variables, they all imply a vector. So on average, the average age of people is getting older. Based on historical trends, pharmaceutical regulation keeps going up. People get taxed more than ever. The population's increasing. Okay? Now, if you're not sure if something is a, is a good key variable and you're working with your group, ask your group about something. Hey, do you think this is a good key variable? And, or hey, do you think this is obvious? And if you get a bunch of people snickering, that's usually a sign that you stated something very obvious. We always laugh at things because they're obvious, and we always laugh at things because they're true. Okay? Um, so if you get a lot of snickering, then that's probably a good key variable. However, if anybody in your group says, you know what, no, I don't believe that, even one person, that's probably not a good key variable. Okay? Key variables are very obvious things. They're very non-debatable sort of things. And in this corner, pen's running out there. In this corner, you're going to have your pivot variables. And I'll just put something in here. V1, V6, V8, V9, V10, you know, whatever. And again, pivot variables are things that we don't really know if that's going to happen. So, high uncertainty. But if it does happen, that's pretty significant, and we need to be worried about that, and we need to pay attention to that. Okay? So those are going to be your pivot variables. And then you might kind of litter your graph with some other ones. And these are variables that you don't really pay a lot of attention to. You know, for purposes of my course, you know, I say you just need three variables in a scenario. But of course, if you're actually doing this full time for a large company, your scenarios actually start looking like book chapters and you'll have dozens of variables. And some of these other ones you might need to include in there because they would have some sort of a minor uh, residual effect. Of course, you also want to put them in here because when you're doing your consulting gig, there's always that, you know, wise guy in the audience and they're talking about something they say, well, you know, you forgot this variable. You, you can say, well, no, it's right here. It's not particularly relevant, and we know quite a bit about it, so I chose not to put it in there. And the boss can say, well, I think that's a key variable. And you can say, well, fine, boss. I'll put it in there. And then the boss gets to prove that the boss is right. The difference between putting this in here and just moving it up is you are someone with a difference of opinion, but you're still thoughtful, whereas if you neglect to put it in there at all, You've kind of done sloppy uh, scenario building. So I think it's important to put some of these other things in here. Rule of thumb that I was given was do about 30 variables for a scenario building project. Great. So we've actually built our, our graph here. In the next video, I'll actually show you how you can kind of smash these variables together. We're going to take one key variable and two pivots. We're going to smash them together, create some narratives, and generate a few scenarios. So I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.